Miss Fending of Maza Kenya, damn, 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 Quenda. Depending on Maza Kenya, Quenda, Miss Tambuyo Molo, Quenda, Quenda, Miss Jawai Haya Manding, damn, damn, Miss Tambuyo Molo, damn, did I look like I give a damn? I don't wanna know, I don't wanna know, and I don't give a damn. I don't give a damn, 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 damn. They were trying to force me to wear clothes because they were embarrassed. They were embarrassed that I was, they had deported me naked. So they deported you naked and they yeah. want you to land in Kenya and then you wear clothes? Yeah. So you protect their image? Yeah, to protect their image that they are. And you refuse to wear the clothes? I refuse to wear the clothes and the red was close, like, no. Hello, welcome to Tuka Talks. My name is Lynn Gogi. Now, my guest today has received some of the most heartbreaking comments from You Can't Sing, Your Music is Trash, and You Should Probably Go and Try Something Else. But she says you should not judge her before you hear her story. So without further ado, please allow me to let her introduce herself. Mami, habari yako? Mzuri sana. I don't give a damn, damn, <laughs> Damn, damn, I don't really care. Wait, 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 wait. Me, me, Leona, do want to check out, like, before I turn the hands, if you introduce yourself. Okay, mm -hmm. so my name is, uh, my official name is Marceline Atieno Onyango. My artist name is Marcy Atis. Atis is just taken from Atieno. Yeah. It's short form of Atieno, so it's Atis, sir. Mm -hmm. So, Marcy Artis. Marcy Artis. Yes. And Marcy Artis is not giving a damn. No, I don't give a damn. <laughs> <laughs> I am so excited to have you on the show. Thank Trust you. Trust me, I am, I, am a, I am a believer mm -hmm. that if you have a dream, you should not give up on it simply because people want you to give up on that dream. So, sir, if you take us through your story. Okay, absolutely. So, mm -hmm. just briefly, mm -hmm. I'm a mother of two handsome boys age three years old mm -hmm. and one year old and i was born in sierra county yeah. i was born in sierra county somewhere called kabura kabura eh, kabura eh. <laughs> <laughs> okay so i grew up um in the village with my mom and my dad and life was fun and when I was a little, little girl, I used to sing in church. And uh, in, I, I grew up in the Seventh-day Adventist church. Mm -hmm. So I used to sing in the SDA church with the Pathfinders and the Adventurers and we go to camp meetings. So that's really where my passion, my passion began. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And so you grew up, you went to school. How was school life for you? School life was very favorable for me mm -hmm. because when I was young, I had a polio attack. I couldn't uh, walk. I was paralyzed. So I would be taken to school in a uh, wheelbarrow because we didn't have wheelchairs. But I was very bright in class. Mm -hmm. uh, my favorite subjects being mathematics oh, and me English. Too. Yeah. Me too, me too. <laughs> really, yes. really, that's amazing. Uh -huh. And my dad was a teacher. So he always spoke to us in English, even though we were in the village. So. Uh, school was very favorable. I was loved by all the teachers because they would be like, this kid can't even walk and she's number one, number two, number three. I know everybody says that, but I really was. If you look at my report books, I was always top three uh -huh. in the whole primary school. Uh -huh. Yeah. Wow. So uh, I went to Nia Girls High School. I have a lot of friends from Nia Girls High School mm. who follow you and to go, hi. Ah, <laughs> do you want us to give them a shout out? Yeah. Hi, my people. <laughs> shout out to Nia Girls High School alumni. Yes. Yeah. So uh, at Nia Girls High School, I was also part of a choir called The Choral by Madame Anne Awur. Mm -hmm. And the first time that I ever came to Nairobi was to sing. Can you believe that? Hi. Yeah. Uh -huh. I came with the, the choral choir with Madame Anna Ward yeah. to sing. Yeah. And so this has always been in the blood. This has always been your dream. Yes. So mm -hmm. in Mia Girls, um, it was really nice. And uh, my, my passion continued to grow uh -huh. from there. From yes. there. Yes. And I know, I know most of our viewers do not know this, huh? but uh -huh. you also went to America and then you got deported. 
Yes. You are under 40. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. How did you end up in America? After high school, I went to Barton University in Eldoret, mm -hmm. University of Eastern Africa. Mm. Uh, just for a few semesters because after high school I went to live with my brother. My mom passed away when I was in form 3. Oh, sorry. Thank you. And so after high school I went to live with my brother who was studying theology to become a pastor. Just two months down the line he died very suddenly of uh, pneumonia. Mm -hmm. And after my brother's death, uh, the lecturers at the University of Eastern Africa they were very, very empathetic with my situation because they were like, this uh, girl is an orphan, she lost her mom and now she's losing her brother. And so we have to do something. So at that time I was admitted, right after high school, I was admitted to Baraton University mm -hmm. for free. For free? Yes. Full scholarship? It was not a full scholarship, it was just uh, Professor Mutuku Mutinga was then the professor. Yeah. And he admitted me the first semester. I didn't have to pay for anything. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to pay. Mm -hmm. And I started to do accounting. And so um, one of my brother's friends uh, went to the US. And when he went to the US, he was actually a Kalenjin. Mm -hmm. He went to the US and he kept writing me an email and he was like, I really feel bad because your brother died. I really want to help you. Mm -hmm come to America mm -hmm. and I was like yeah I would love to come to America and then I was like even if I'm coming to work as a maid you know like a house girl I'm ready I'm ready to come because I want to change my life and the life of my family mm -hmm. eventually he sent me some applications for a school called Wachita Hills College mm -hmm. and I applied and I was accepted wow. with a full scholarship wow Okay. Yes, so <laughs> I remember when I got the admission letter, I was at Balaton and I was really broke. So I came all the way to Nairobi and I lived at Nairobi University with a student. Yeah, um, Oli Odipo, <laughs> hi. He hosted me for a while as I was looking for a way to get my passport, my visa. I didn't have money for anything and so um, I went to Department of Immigration in Nairobi mm. <coughs> and I found there, then the, the person who was in charge of immigration gave me another guy called Azai Otieno and they processed my passport for free. Wow. I didn't pay a dime for my passport. You have so much favor following you. Yeah. Uh -huh. I was like, this is amazing. So then uh, after I got my passport, they tried to book for me an interview at the US Embassy but it was all fully booked. So, you know, from the day I was supposed to report, going backwards was fully booked. So it's like I couldn't go. But then again, Isaiah took my hands to the American Embassy and I did an interview and the first interview, I did an interview without appointment at the US Embassy. Something like almost unheard of. Very rare. Yeah. So I remember the interviewee, mm. they are asking me, why should I give you a visa and not everybody else? And I was like, mom, because I have a spirit that never gives up. I know that even when I go to America, life will not be easy. But I promise you that I will never give up. And you meant it. Yes, and I told the interview, the person who was doing interview, the interviewer, mm. that when I was in high school, my mom died. I went home, I buried my mom, I picked up myself and I went back and finished high school. So the same way I didn't give up when my mom died, I will never give up even in America, no matter how difficult things will be, I will never give up. At that time the lady was nodding her head and she shouted, congratulations, you've been given a visa to the United States of America and I was like, <laughs> screaming I started running and she was like no 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 come back come back come back I was like oh my god they're gonna take the visa away from me because they told me you should not be too excited when you get a visa but she was like okay come back in two days and pick up your visa like it was like the happiest wow. day yeah oh, I was yeah. so happy mm -hmm. but you know what happened Lynn mm -hmm. I didn't have money to buy my plane ticket to the United States the scholarship included after I go to the US mm -hmm. But I did not have money to buy the ticket. 
So I went knocking on the offices in Nairobi again, walking the whole day. I ended up at HELB, Higher Education Loans Board. Mm. Yeah? And I met uh, Mr. Ndebwa. Mr. Ndebwa? Yeah? I told him I want a loan to go to book my ticket to the US. And he was like, no, we don't give loans to people if you're going outside Kenya, only if you're studying in Kenya. Yeah. So he connected me to a very beautiful woman, an amazing woman called Mrs. Sayonga. Mm who was also a, a former student at Baraton University and uh, her husband is, a, is an SDA pastor. So I told her my story, I told her my dad is really old, my mom died, I have the visa, I don't have money for my ticket. They took me to their church. When they took me to their church, they told me to kneel down so we can pray. The husband, the, the pastor got up and told the congregation, listen, this is an orphan. And God said that I am the mother and the father of all orphans. So I want us to pray. And the pastor prayed like the whole church was moving. Everybody was in tears. Like God, open a way. Give her money to buy her ticket. God, you can't start the story and leave it. Protect her. Let her come back home safely. Let her go to study. The pastor like said a very powerful prayer. Pastor Ayonga, wherever you are, thank you. And so they told me to go home and rest. I had like maybe two days left before the deadline and then I, I can't go anymore. Mm. When I went to the office on Monday, they said, you have your ticket. Oh my God, oh yeah. my God. The people in church, they contributed money oh, for me. Oh man. Yes. <laughs> and so the pastor uh, booked for me my flight with yes. Emirates. Mm -hmm. And there I was going to America. <laughs> Crazy, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was I was going to America. I remember being in the aeroplane and just going like, wow, is it me? I'm going to America. Yeah, and that time I was full of dreams like, oh, you know, I'm going to be somebody, I'm going to have a good life, I'm going to have my family. It was just beautiful. Mm. And you landed in America? I landed in America. What I, did you do? What did you do? Because I know, um, okay, I've never been in America. Yeah. Hopefully God opens doors Amen. and we go soon. Yes. But um, when you got to America, mm -hmm. what did you do? Because you have to make a living, right? Yes. So yes. you have to go to school and still make a living. Yes. <laughs> so the first time I landed in Houston, Texas. Well, well, yes. <laughs> you say Houston, okay. Ah, <laughs> Houston, Texas. Yes, not Houston. It's oh. written Houston. But to say but Houston, and okay. then I was going to Arkansas. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> You're so low key, so, funny. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. so when I got to Houston, Texas, mm -hmm. I was delayed a bit because the Griggs University is in Maryland, and I'm going to Arkansas. So I missed my flight from Houston to Arkansas. Yeah. And so when I finally got released and got to Arkansas, the people who had come to pick me up. They were not there. They had gone. So eventually I got a lady, a black American lady, mm. and she was like, hi, honey, you know. And I was like, oh my God, she just called me honey. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know, honey is, yeah. you call to somebody that you are in love with. Yes. So I was so shocked. And she's like, how can I help you, sweetheart? I was dead. I was like, no way. This woman is calling me honey, sweetheart. Uh, I was scared. Uh -huh. But eventually she was like, it's okay. And I tell you, I'm from Africa. And she said, oh my God, you're from the motherland. African-American lady. Oh, wow. She embraced me. She hugged me. She was like, welcome to America. Uh -huh. And I was like, thank you. And she said, you know the phone number to the school where you are going to? I was like, I don't know. So she had to go through all my papers to find the phone number. The phone number was there, but because it's not written with 07, you know, 0701, so mm. I didn't know that was the phone number. Mm. <laughs> Eventually the school picked me up and they took me to the hostel. So we started the program of selling books and magazines door to door. Mm. Yeah, we would have like a bag full of books and we would knock on people's doors. These were Christian books? Yes, Christian okay. books, mm -hmm. yes. So we had like to uh, cram something 
if I knock on your door, mm -hmm. I'll be like, hi, hi, my name is Mercy. Mm -hmm. I'm a student working my way through school. Instead of junk food or magazines, we decided to offer something more lasting. And then they couldn't, I would speak like for five minutes and then the white person would be like, huh? What did you just say? Oh. My accent was so heavy. Yeah. So they had to teach me, hi, my name is Mercy. I'm a student working my way through school, whatever, this American accent. Okay. Until I learned how you know, to speak. Yeah. Yeah. How to have that American accent. How to accent. have, yeah, so they could understand what I was saying. Uh -huh. So I sold books the whole summer time, and then we were supposed to report in school. But we didn't, we had to continue selling books. So after a while I was like, I want to go to school, you know, I want to go to school. I don't want to sell books. I love selling books, but I don't want to sell books. And you went to America to, yeah, go, to, to go to school. So I continued with the program for like eight months and I didn't go to school. So I was not really happy because I really, really, I really wanted to go to school. Like I told you before, I am a very bright student in school. So one day I met this lady who is uh, from a Baptist church and uh, she said I looked sad. So she asked me about my story and she happened to be a missionary in Kenya. And she stole me away from the place where I was selling books. Mm -hmm. She went to her church and they registered me in a real school, mm -hmm. uh, Northwest Arkansas Community College. Mm -hmm. So I started going to a real school where I was studying nursing. Nursing, yeah, nursing yeah, to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So then um, I started going to school. I got my CNA certificate, uh, CNA certified nursing assistant. Mm -hmm. So then I started working. But you know, if you are in, if you are studying in the U.S., you have to pay international tuition. International tuition means almost like three times what American citizen pays, and then you don't qualify for scholarships, much of financial aid. Um, the fees is really high, but you are really limited to, mm -hmm. to the opportunities. opportunities, yeah. So after a while, I couldn't uh, continue because of the school fees. I decided to work so I can support my family in Kenya. So I was working as a full-time nurse, like a certified nursing assistant. Mm. I worked for a while until I moved to Texas. You know, I was living in Arkansas. Yeah. And then the... The, 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 the passion, the dream to become a singer moved me to California. I ended up in California. Hey, you started now chasing the dream. I started chasing the dream. Yeah. So I, I moved to California. In California, when I moved there, um, I ended up homeless. <laughs> and I was living in a shelter. That's where I got arrested. At the shelter? At the shelter. So you moved from Texas? I moved from Arkansas to Texas. To Texas. From Texas to California. To Texas, actually, to New Jersey first, yeah. and then to California. So you were following this dream of being an artist, yes, a musician. I was, yes. You had it in you. I had it in me. So you kept convincing yourself that one day I'm going to be a star. Yes. And then you come to California, you end up in a shelter. I, Why did you get arrested? I got arrested because I, I lit a carpet on fire, a rug. Uh -huh. Like a small piece of rug. This is what happened. My ba my my father. I'm almost to say my baba. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my father passed away in Kenya when I was in the U.S. and I couldn't go. I couldn't come to his burial. So I asked my family to make a video for me of his funeral. The video when they made it for me, it came to the shelter. When the shelter people received it, they're supposed to give it to me. Yes. But instead, they opened it. They opened it and they started watching it in their office, the staff that worked at the shelter. And so I'm coming back uh, to the shelter and I see mail because they opened and they left the envelope open in my, in my mailbox. And I'm like, what's going on? So I pass by the staff. You have to pass by the staff room before I go to my room. And I see them watching a video of my father's funeral and uh, I'm in shock but what really made me mad um, they saw me and they started laughing and then they closed the door so here I'm like okay so you have a video 
of my father's funeral. You are watching it without my permission. And then you are laughing. And then you are closing the door to my face. I remember just what happened, but I went crazy. I started banging the door. Excuse me, excuse me, please open the door. And they were laughing louder. Open the door, open the door. And I was banging the door. Open the door. Why are you watching my father's funeral? Why are you doing this to me? And they were laughing. So I had a charcoal lighter fluid. I poured it on the carpet and I lit it on fire. Wow. At the same time, when I lit the thing on fire, they opened the door and they turned the fire off with, um, in fact, I still have the police reports with me in the house. I'm going to show you one day, actually. Yeah. They turned the fire off with a hooded sweatshirt. It was not like a big fire that went and blew anything that yeah. hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. So I got arrested. Initially, I was arrested for unlawfully causing a fire. This one is punishable by six months in jail. But when I went to jail, they upgraded the charge to, to arson. arson. Arson, yes. Arson is causing a fire with intention to kill people. And damage property. Yes. So um, there was really no evidence that my intention was to kill people. So they brought in other false charges. I swear to God, like the whole time I was arrested, I kept saying, this is not true. They said that when I was lighting the rug on fire, I was saying, I'm going to burn this down and kill you. But I did not say that. So they brought up two, two, two criminal threat charges that were totally false. Lynn, I don't deny that what I did was wrong. However, I did it to get their, these people's attention so they can open the, so door. They can open the door and give, give me the CD, opinion. right. But I didn't, if I really wanted to burn down the place, I would not have lit a rag on fire. I could have done something flammable, like a mattress or something that would blow up. So were you, <coughs> were you also stressed because you came to chase your music career and things were not uh, going according to plan? I'm imagining mm -hmm. with all this frustration, mm -hmm. they were not just because you found them watching a video. It they was it was in addition to many other frustrations that yeah. I had faced. Yeah. Exactly. It was it was like a, I had a breakdown. Yes. If I can say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can say that I had a breakdown because uh, here I was, I'm homeless, you know, I'm the one supposed to support my family. Uh, in the shelter also they were not friendly. They were not friendly, they were many, many mistreatments. So, Lynn, this is where the story really gets. Excuse me, Kidogo. I was in Los Angeles jail. Yes. And I had nobody to call, nobody to visit, nobody who even knew or even cared that I was in jail. You know, in the US, before you go to court, you have to meet your lawyer outside. So I met my lawyer outside. He was lying to me that he's from Ghana, but he's actually African-American. So I said, why do you lie to me that you're from Ghana? You know what the lawyer said? I am declaring you mentally incompetent to stand trial. Yani mimi ni crazy. So that day when I went inside court, they usually say, this is the case of the people versus Marcelino Nyango, the defendant is present. They didn't read my case, they didn't read my case number. The judge just said, we are declaring the defendant incompetent to stand trial. We have ordered a psychiatry evaluation. This case is postponed for three months. I'm going back to jail for three months. Do you understand what I'm saying, yes, Lynn? Yes, yes. They blackmailed me. Yes, naelewa. They blackmailed me live before my own people, before my Kenyan people. And let me say there were at least 10 Kenyans in court on that day. They said the defendant is mentally incompetent to stand trial. And you've never been me you've never been psycho. No, they were doing this so that I don't get uh, to get out of jail. Yes. It was a blackmail. Mm. So then I started crying. I was like, no, no, no way, no way. I'm going back to jail for three months for a mental evaluation. And I'm not crazy. I started crying and screaming. I was like, no, this is not fair. Even the police officers, they felt sorry for me. They were like, a judge or a lawyer cannot declare you incompetent. What they are doing is illegal. Only a doctor.
can declare your incompetence. Yeah, because I was about to ask. Right. You had not even, there were no tests right. done prior right. to this conviction. Right. Someone just says you are mentally incompetent. And right, and they are not a doctor. You. And they are not doctors. Right. Oh, so even the police officers, they were like, no, what they are doing to you is not right. Mm -hmm. It's wrong. And um, and so I remember crying, crying, crying. And the, the more I cried, the more they took advantage of it. They were like, you see how she's crying? You see how she's behaving? She's crazy. Really, she's crazy. A normal person doesn't cry like that in court. I was crying because of the torture they are putting me through. And so for the other, the next 18 months I was in jail, going back and forth, back and forth. And there was a time when I got really, 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 really low. Like I was feeling like a failure, like even if I could just die, like how can I go back to Kenya? And so um, I remember one day, <laughs> one officer, I don't know what was happening. Okay, I know what was happening. She was putting, they always put you on lockdown in a cell where you can't get out for 24 hours. She was putting me on lockdown wrongfully because my roommate had left her beddings when they are supposed to do laundry. And she started saying, Ah, oh, you African monkey, you should go chase monkeys in, in, the, in the forest over there in Africa. Let me tell you, Lynn, racism is real. If you see the Black Lives Matter movement, I've experienced it firsthand. Go back and chase the monkeys in Africa there. Uh, nobody cares about you. And at that time, I had also cried enough. You know, sometimes you cry until you become hard or you don't care anymore. I was like, no way you're calling me a monkey. I'm not a monkey and, and you're a <laughs> and so when I said that, they pulled me out of the cell and they took me to somewhere called the hall. In the hall is a dark place and they beat me almost to death. I remember maybe like at least almost 10 police officers, most of them black, ironically, and some white. I remember them like pressing on my chest like with boots, you know, they wear very heavy boots. Until I can't breathe, I go, if I try to breathe, I go, oh. I can't breathe and they were beating me mercilessly. I was bleeding everywhere. And they were like, um, now they started like stepping on me like, bam, bam, bam. And so eventually they dragged me and put me inside uh, a cell that is full of human feces. There are some inmates who are mentally crazy. So they poo poo and they do it. They put it all over the wall. Oh so God, I wish I could meet some of them. Oh. Anyway, I have to cut it really fast. I mm. kept going to court for 18 months and then I went to trial. And trial, I was told I can't talk because uh, if I talk, I will be given eight years. Trial went like for one day, I was sentenced to five years in prison. And the day I was sentenced to five years in prison, I felt like, oh God, like my world is coming down. I've already spent here 18 months. Now I'm going to prison five years really for a rag that burned for maybe one one minute two minutes so the racism is not that or the discrimination is not that somebody didn't commit an offense it's the level of punishment that is too high so i served the five years and uh five years in prison yes and then from prison as if that's not enough again to immigration jail why because my visa has expired now oh. And that's oh. not their fault that I was in prison. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So again to immigration jail, and here I have to be my own lawyer. For eight months, again, in immigration jail, I'm fighting my case. So fighting my case, I filed for asylum. Uh, everything was denied. And so I went on a hunger strike because I was like, how many times must you punish me? You punish me in jail, you punish me in prison, you punish me in immigration. Now you want to deport me, that's another punishment. How many, how many times must I serve for one thing that I did wrong? So, um, I lost it of course and, and I got deported. I got deported in a hospital gown, bloody hospital gown. That covers just the front, the back is all naked. I want to know, when you say you lost it at immigration, mm -hmm. what did you do to get yourself deported? Uh, I was being deported for being in prison. Mm -hmm. For the crime that I committed before going to prison. 
Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. For the arson case. In yes. Court. So now yes. they are deporting you for the arson yes. case. Yes, but they were supposed to either deport me or send me to prison. Mm. You're not supposed to send me to prison and, and then deport, deport me again. So, so you served five years for nothing. Right. Right. Like if you wanted to deport me, just deport me. Don't take me to prison or just take me, take me to prison and get me out. Anyway, I remember when I first landed in, in Ajomo Kenyatta International Airport, um, all that I had, I had nothing, you know? Everything was lost in the US. I had a car there, a Dodge Neon. I had money in my bank account, Bank of America. To date, I've never been able to access it. I don't know how to access it. So I had nothing. The only thing that I had was the, the songs I was handwriting. And I was like, with this, I know I can make a life. I know that with these lyrics, I can make a life. Because God put those songs in my heart. So, um, it's many, many stories. I know we are running out of time. But the Red Cross received me at the airport, the, the Kenya Red Cross. You were received by the Kenya Red Cross? Yes, they were called because the uh, American officers, they were harassing me. And the Red Cross, they are bad. Like, they were like, how do you treat Kenyans like this? Huh? You know that if you are now in Kenyan soil, don't treat her anymore like this. If you touch her again, you're going to be in trouble well, what here. What exactly were they doing to you? They were trying to force me to wear clothes because they were embarrassed. They were embarrassed that I was, they had deported me naked. So they deported you naked and they yeah. want you to land in Kenya and then you wear clothes? Yeah. So you protect their image? Yeah, to protect their image that they are... And you refuse to wear the clothes? I refuse to wear the clothes and the red was clothes like, no! So they took me to Mata Hospital and the Red Cross made them to pay the hospital bill for Mata Hospital mm. and... As soon as I got well, I ran to the studio. <laughs> and like, there's something I want to understand. Eh? Yeah. When you go to the US, eh? mm -hmm. because like for example, when our relatives go to the US, mm -hmm. people are like, wa njia zetu zimefunguka. Mm -hmm. Our daughter has gone to the US. Right. Our, our life will change. Eh? Right. And then you learn mm -hmm. with nothing. Mm -hmm. What is your family saying, your relatives, your friends? What are they saying about that? You know, my family, I, I have to say that I'm very lucky to have the most supportive family in the world. Uh, they just wanted me alive at this point. Amazing. Yeah, they just wanted me alive. They were like, we don't care. We just, I was received by my brother who works at the Air Force. Mm. And after that, I went to stay with my sister. After my sister, I, my sister was now like overprotective. You know, she's the elder sister. Mm. She didn't want me to go anywhere or find a job. She just wanted to protect me with her wings. Were you and traumatized said, because you went through so much? Oh, I Were was. Who wouldn't be? Did, what, did you have access to therapy? No, I didn't. I, can, I did therapy myself by writing a book. I've written a book about my story. Mm. Yeah, though I've never published. <laughs> But I've written a book about my life. I've written another book about what happened in the U.S. Yeah. And when, I, when you're writing, you cry a lot, you know. So in the process of crying and writing a book is the process that I've, yeah, that I've been able to heal. Mm. And um, it's, it's overwhelming, but I'm just so grateful, you know. I'm so grateful and... And so happy to be sitting with you, Lynn. Like it's been my dream forever, man. Yeah, I've been forever, following man. you forever. <laughs> <laughs> forever, man. Oh. Yes. Huh? I've been following you forever and I've always wanted to sit here on this red Karibu chair sana. with you. Yeah. Karibu. So uh, yeah. I, I really thank you and I thank God and I thank Kenyans. Yeah. You know, this song, I don't want to know. It started like yes, a joke. Yes, let's talk about the song. Yeah. Because I don't want to know. Yes. It's Now it's very popular. Yeah. It's still viral. Yeah. And so many people are like, I don't want to know. People have uh, even given it their own to me. Right. I don't give a, you, you yeah, know, like yeah, that. Yeah. So, uh, uh, why did you write the song? Let's start with, why did you write the song? I don't give a damn. I don't give a damn. I don't give a damn. the song because of so many fake friends it's unfortunate but if you live in Kenya you have to be very careful with people you know uh, one thing that is different between Kenya and the US US is you become very trusting because there when you say something most likely you mean it but Kenyan can say something and even promise you heaven on earth but it's not there oh. mm. <laughs> it's not there mm. 
and so sometimes when you are so open hearted and you're so loving and and so caring and so kind I, I say I'm all of that and you like to welcome people in your life and sometimes help people but they take advantage they take advantage and they stab you in the back and they want bad for you so you have to be careful with people so I wrote this song for all the fake people and you know yourselves <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah all the fake people that I've met in my life here in Kenya and I want to tell you if you're one of them see now buyer now I don't have anything but I don't hold any grudges against anybody you know some people say I have imaginary enemies no I have real I've had real but me I'm not anybody's enemy mm. people who lie who accuse you falsely who take you to be arrested that's not a friend yes you and know yeah I know right now even as we speak mm -hmm. uh, speaking of fake friends and uh, people saying this uh, mm -hmm. you have um, uh, you have um, there's a story of you right now you have a matter before court mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that you are caught in some adult sites drama right so right that's pornography right right uh -huh. Right. And I know we that can't discuss it further. Right, I can't discuss it further because it's an issue of court, but I can just say it was a setup, like pure setup mm -hmm. by people who are my so called friends. And hence the song I don't care. And hence the song I don't care. Telling me what they said. He said, she said, he said, she said, she said, they said, yes, 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 Okay, okay. Now before I sing, mm. thank you, Calligraph. Oh my god. You know Mr. that was not so no not real. I was like, what? Calligraph Jones. <laughs> he posted my song, I was like, what? No way. So let me just uh let me just try this little rap of yes. his that is the latest. It goes like this. Miss Pending on Kenya. Damn, 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 Quenda. <laughs> Mazay, oh you boy, you ring a sana. Damn, 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 damn. Quenda! <laughs> you are doing a remix. So right now. Yeah, okay, let's go, let's go. I'm remixing my song with Calligraph already. Tipendi Mango Maza Kenya. Quenda! Quenda! Missy Tambuyo Molo. Quenda! Mimi si jawai haya mandinga. Damn, damn. Mimi si tambuyo molo. Damn, did I look like I give a damn? I don't wanna know. I don't wanna know. And I don't give a damn. I don't give a damn, damn. Damn, 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 damn. And I don't really care. I don't really care. I don't really care. Ili bidi ningi ye kwa debe. Nifo iso makura nizifate. One love, one love. Nifo iso makura nizifate. Ime bidi ni jirushe kwa debe. Ime bidi ni jirushe kwa debe. Iso makura lazima ni bebe. Iso makura lazima ni bebe. Thank you so much, Maina and Maina Kageni. Yes. Thank you, Willie Madoro. You're the one who made the video go viral. There's a lady also from... I don't know if you have posted the song. And if people have even commented yeah. on the song, yeah. we want to say thank you. And even the haters, man, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you just made me as a lamb. Guess yeah. what? <laughs> Next time you're going to talk to me, call my manager first. Where, where, where? To shake it up you are such a happy soul. Oh, so let me ask you, uh, when the song came out, mm -hmm. of course now people are making fun of it, people are happy about it, mm -hmm. but uh, when it came out, so many negative comments too yes. were on the song. Yes. Some people said your makeup sucked, mm -hmm. some people said you could not sing, mm -hmm. some people are like, what the hell is <laughs> this? this? What yeah. did I just watch? Right, right. But talk to me about those comments. Okay, so about the makeup mm. yeah mm -hmm. i did my own makeup and like i said i am proudly a village girl you can take a girl out of the village but you can't take the village out of the garden so nana nimeenda mpaka america bado ushamba hujatoka so yeah. yeah so i'm asking if you're a professional makeup artist you know feel free to come and help I'm watching some stuff on YouTube, but other things, uh, okay, I'm not getting it. Mm. So, uh, uh, I was really looking forward to the positive comments like this, yeah? You don't know how to do your makeup, let me help you. Your outfit is off, like, you don't know how to dress. 
Let me dress. help you dress. Let me dress you. Because I know Kenyans sometimes to be criticizing but also loving. I've seen Kenyans do amazing things for people who are in need, you know? Like uh, build a house for people. Uh, even Kenyans. support them. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Kenyans are amazing. So I'm asking you, you know, I'm asking the Kenyans. Go on, no, don't, 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 there's no yeah. shame in asking. So yeah. ask, what yeah. do you want? What okay. do you want? So, okay, so if you're a designer, please come help me to dress better. Because, Badoile, Ushamba uh, Haijatoka. Okay, if you're a professional makeup artist, please. Help me to uh, do my makeup sometimes or teach me how to do makeup, yeah? Mm -hmm. And um, we can turn all the negative comments into something positive so we can get better and better and better. And if you don't like to see my potty, I saw some people commenting that I have a potty. I have two babies, yeah? Yeah. I'm doing, trying to exercise, but if you don't like my potty, you can listen to the audio. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to watch the video. You don't have to watch the video. You don't Just, have to watch the video. I'm going to be... Uh, on Kenyan music for a long time and I'm hoping that uh, I will do many collabs, you know. Mm -hmm. who, yeah. do you, who do you want to do a collab with? The first person is Calligraph Jones. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, in Uganda I like this guy who say Una ni umiza sa na ni na 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 I got to go oh, uh, I got to go, yes. Yeah, uh -huh. in, in Uganda. Yeah. What's his name? Chameleon. Yeah, Chameleon, yes. yes. Oh uh -huh. my God, I would die to do. You know Chameleon songs, I would listen to them in prison. Mm. They are like international. And then in um, in South Africa, is this Mama Chaka Chaka available? Because I've seen love from Lynn everywhere, all of Africa, even yes. outside. Yeah. Thank you for the love. I love all of you guys. And we love you too. Yes, just give me a chance, give me support. You can buy my t-shirts. I have hooded sweatshirts. Mm -hmm. And um, and your music too. And my music, I have a video. I have a a whole album that is out. Yes. This year I have done five music videos, and they are all going to be in one DVD. So if you want to order, if you want to order my DVD or the audio or the T-shirts. You can WhatsApp me directly, yeah? Yes. My WhatsApp number is this. It's also my MPSA number, okay? Uh -huh. 0740 60 72 27. Okay. okay? You, you want to repeat yeah. the number? Okay. Uh -huh. My WhatsApp number 0740 60 72 27. And please, when you WhatsApp me, uh, let's mostly be about business. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's you a single right now. Yes, I'm a single mother of two kids. And how, how are you? Let me ask you mm -hmm. right now, how are you able to provide for your kids? I'm a hustler. <laughs> what are you hustling? I have uh, stuff that I'm selling. I own the hair salon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, the have, you have a salon? Yeah, although it's not a big thing, but, yeah, it's, but it's still a yeah, business. Yeah, yeah, it's still a business. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I also sell some clothes online. I have a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where I sell some clothes online, mm -hmm. and and uh, just wherever whatever comes support business. Comes, yeah, comes, huh? yeah. Whatever Let me support ask you comes. Once, yeah. What's the greatest lesson you mm -hmm. have learned in all the things that you've been through? All the things that I've been through, okay, I've learned above all, don't give up. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Don't give up. It's that thing like uh, when I was telling the uh, interviewer at the American Embassy, I will never give up. Like I could foresee. So I can tell, I can tell you and I can tell uh, the viewers that whatever you are going through, don't give up. And if you're somebody who likes to help people, and, 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 and be good to people. God has something in store for you that is just beautiful. Mm. So come out uliumbwa evil. If you are created with a good heart, don't say, okay, now they did this to me, now I can't help anybody else. No, just continue with your good heart and God will reward you. Mm -hmm.
God will reward you faithfully. Yeah, what does the future look like for you when you imagine yourself in a couple of years to come? Oh my God, the future looks so bright. Yeah. The future looks so bright for me, okay? Yes. I see myself um, releasing in a couple of years mm -hmm. many, 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 many songs, at least 100. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see myself releasing many songs. I see myself touring the whole continent of Africa. Yes, I love the Africa. Whole world. Yeah. Mm. And then the other parts of the world. I even see America calling me to go tell them my story. Yes, yes, <laughs> and them just giving me a visa without even me asking. Amen, amen, <laughs> yeah. Amen. So I can see that the future is very bright. Uh, the future maybe God has somebody for me, like hey, a husband. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Who is going to love me just the way I am, the, with the craziness and everything, you know? And the dream. And the dream, and yeah. The yeah. Okay. So, right. mm -hmm. by God's grace, I see the future to be very, very bright. Yes. Sir. Yeah. All right, so I want to ask you to sing for us Ka Kitu mm -hmm. Kabla Tufunge Shu. I'm going to sing this gospel because this song took me through the darkest days of my life. And um, always when I sing it, it has very heavy meaning to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. it's called Does Jesus Care? Mm -hmm. Does Jesus care when my heart is pain too deeply for me then song as the burdens press and the cares distress and the days grows weary and long. Oh yes, he cares, I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary the long, nights dreary, my Savior cares. Every time I know I dear Kuyo Namu no Chunye Ka ol kodyo chin kaluor Go teno Jesus cares. If nobody else Jesus cares. If nobody else cares, Jesus just know cares. that Jesus cares. Jesus cares. Yes. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> yes, I'm Thank so proud you. of you. And I know what we to watuko wapendi mchezo. Yeah. And you've taught us something important. Yeah. That uh, we should avoid judging people. Yeah. And I always say, learn I always say this, this thing that says, uh, be kind to people mm -hmm. because everyone is fighting a battle you know nothing about. Uh, right. And thank you so much for taking your time to come all the way from Malindi and share your story with us. I really appreciate it. Uh, and thank you, my Tuko family, why don't we show this sister some love? Go to her YouTube channel, subscribe, comment, like, and even say Tuko sent you. Follow her on social media, or even if you don't follow her, leave her a message, tell her you inspired by her work call her order her t-shirts let's support her she has a dream and you guys can see it and most importantly let's practice being non-judgmental because as you can see you don't know people's stories until they share them with you i'm so honored to host you today on the show and i wish you all the best may you prosper may you go far may you have so much in your life huh? and may mm -hmm. you always remember you are not your past and you can start again and you can dream again and you can grow to be the superstar you want Amen. to be. So all the best. And if you ever even need a platform to come and share your story and say, I'm working on this project and this project, Tuko will always be here oh, for you. Thank you. All right? thank okay. you. Thank you so much, my lovely people for watching. 
Uh, remember, you can always share your story with me here on Tuko Talks. The email is pinned on the comment section. Hapo. Nakama Kawa, see you again next time. My name is Lynn Gugi. Thank you.